Hey everybody, welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. I'm Dennis Fields and today we're going to be discussing how to add fruit and different adjuncts to your secondary. In this case, I have raspberry sour that I made a few weeks ago. Tonight, we're going to actually be doing the mango fruit addition into my secondary. But I also want to touch bases on some other things, lemon zest, orange zest, ginger, some other things like that, and how to adequately add them to your secondary and the amounts that you'll need to do that. So grab a beer, hit that like and subscribe button, and stay tuned. All right, the first thing I want to go over is when and what are you adding to your beer? Is it, maybe it's lemon zest or orange peel uh, flakes and you want to add them to your boil. Maybe you want to add something like that to a primary or secondary. And the timing of that really depends on how you need to prep that fruit or peel or ginger or whatever. A lot of times when you add something to your, either your mash or your boil process, it's going to kill any normal bacteria just because of the heat that's involved with your boil process. But it also changes the flavor a little bit. And so for fruits, if you add them a little bit in your boil, they'll end up tasting a little bit more like a wine because you've heated them up and, it, and they've pasteurized them, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But the lemon zest can actually add a little bit of flavor during your boil, and it can also add that same flavor or even complement that flavor when you add it to your secondary. And so a lot of times what I'll use is a small shredder like this one that has a fine grit to it, and I'll take the whole fruit, I will kind of wash it real good with, uh, with soap and water, but then I'll dunk the whole thing in, in uh, sanitizer, um, and then I will shred the outside. And when you're using orange or uh, lemons, you want to just get that outside colored area and you don't want to really go down into the white area that's called the pith, okay? And so depending on how you do it, you uh, want to avoid getting as much of that pith flavor because that will come across in your beer. I've done that with oranges before and a little bit of that flavor isn't so bad, but when you have a lot of it, you get it really comes through and what you're wanting is that citrusy outside flavor from the peel itself. And so um, I go ahead and I zest that up. And if I'm putting it right into my boil, a lot of times I'll put it in a small paint strainer bag like this one, and I'll tie it closed, and that will keep some of that smaller particles and stuff. Or you can dump it right in, and if you whirlpool, or if you uh, are using a strainer like I do, uh, if you've ever watched my videos uh, going into your primary, then it'll catch a lot of that anyway. But it's a good idea to just throw it in here, or if you're using a hop spider to catch hops anyway, just dump it right in there. And a lot of times those are towards the end part of your boil anyway. So the last five, 10 minutes of your boil is when you'd probably want to add some lemon or some orange zest. If you're going to be adding any types of fruits or things in your secondary after fermentation is complete or even after you've cooled it down, now you got to really worry about how you're prepping it prior to putting it in your wort or your beer. And so a lot of times I'll add fruit to sours in the secondary. So after primary fermentation is done, that's what we have behind us. This was the mango sour that I brewed in the previous video that I did. We're actually gonna be adding mangoes to it today. So I'll go through that process of what I do to add that to the secondary. If I was using lemon zest or orange zest or tangerines, which I've used a lot in different beers, a uh, great addition to an IPA to give it a little orange uh, hint to it. What I would do is I would still use the same uh, process of getting the, the uh, outside peel off without getting the pith and that zest. And then I would put it in a small bowl like this, and I'd add just enough vodka uh, to, or Everclear even, to cover the top of the uh, zest. You don't want a lot, and you're not trying to make a drink out of it, but you're just wanting enough to kind of soak it and kill any bad bacteria off of it. Vodka has enough uh, alcohol in it that's gonna help kill any of that uh, peel and uh, stuff that's gotten on the outside, even after you've washed it and zested it and you know dunked it in sanitizer. So that's just gonna help keep it sanitized. Then what I do is I take that whole thing, I sanitize one of these, dunk it in some sanitizer, and then I'll dump this whole thing, including the uh, vodka, over my carboy and I'll dump it in here. I'll tie this closed so it catches all the stuff. So I'll just take my hands and basically tie a knot in the top of this thing. And then I put the whole thing into my uh, fermenter. 
the good thing about Zest is it's not very big. You can put this whole thing in a small necked carboy. I use the big mouth bubblers if you've ever watched a lot of my videos, which have the big mouth on them, right? So you're able to easily drop stuff in there. So I recommend doing that. That's what I'm gonna be using today for the whole fruit. And we'll talk about the differences if you don't have one of those and you still wanna add larger chunks of fruit. There's a way to do that. So first we're gonna go grab our mangoes. I'm gonna take a paint strainer bag. You're gonna need a, you're gonna need a big bucket uh, or a um, bowl like this one. You're gonna need a potato masher. This is gonna help us break up any fruit. And then I have a larger paint strainer bag. This one is a five gallon. The other one that we showed uh, is a one gallon. So I use the one gallons for like dry hopping in a secondary, adding small amounts of different adjuncts. Even the ginger, what I'll do is I'll cut it up into thin little slices and I'll add it in there. Ginger's a little bit different though. It's a little stronger. You don't wanna leave ginger in there necessarily for a week unless you're using just a little bit of amount. And then it also starts creating more of a vegetal flavor if it's been in there for a long time. So a lot of times what I'll take is ginger is I'll add uh, about you know a half an ounce per gallon or so is a good rule of thumb depending on how much ginger flavor you want and I'll add it at about three days to when I want to rack and package my beer so after a couple of days I can go and take a sample and taste it and see if it's at where it's at and then if it's not I can leave it a little bit longer the so ginger is one of the other ones that has kind of a, a different rule of thumb most of these things I leave in for a week dry hopping orange zest uh, mangoes or any type of different um, uh, fruits that I'm doing and I will add that for a whole week ginger is a little bit different so let's go ahead. We're gonna go get our mangoes. Um, I buy frozen mangoes. You can actually use fresh fruit. And what I would suggest doing if you use fresh fruit is, um, which is great when they're in season, and I do that for blackberries all the time, is I would go get them. I would wash them very good. I would dunk them in sanitizer. I'd put them in gallon or larger Ziploc bags, and I'd throw them right in the freezer. That's gonna do a couple of things. It's gonna help kill the, the uh, bacteria that's on there. It's gonna also help break down the shell casing that's in there. So we'll talk about a little bit about that process and how to use purees when we get back. All right, so we've talked about all the things we've needed and we've sanitized our masher, our paint strainer bag, which is the five gallon version, and then a bowl. If you can't put everything into a, a carboy like this one that has the big mouth bubbler, um, and, you, and so I'm gonna fill this whole thing and I'm gonna squeeze it inside of this large container. However, if you can't do that and you still wanna use fruit like this one, so we're gonna use mango chunks. I've kind of let them sit out. They're starting to thaw out a little bit and they're starting to become a little squishy. That's right where we want them. Um, this, in this case, is three pounds. So I'm adding two bags of these things because I like to shoot for about a pound per gallon or, or so for fruits in my sours. So there's six pounds that's going in about five, five and a half gallons of uh, of my beer behind us. And if you wanted to do that, you could still use this same process or even puree them and put them in a smaller necked fermenter. So if you use a glass fermenter uh, that is, uh, has a smaller neck like this, you could go ahead and, and pour that into this uh, using a couple different things. You could still use the paint strainer bag to catch any seeds, especially if you're using things like raspberries or blackberries, or you could just dump it in and then eventually use your racking cane and take one of these smaller paint strainer bags, put it over the top. And what I do then is add a rubber band like this over the top of it on the top. And then it kind of serves the same purpose as having the bag on it the whole time. So I'll do this and then create a little room on the bottom. And then this will kind of act as a little bit of a screen to kind of help uh, prevent any seeds and stuff from getting in your final package or any pith or anything else that's left over mango chunks what ha what have you from getting into your racking cane so that's one option if you have to use a smaller uh, net fermenter which you can do it'll, it'll work the same either way the second option uh, is doing the puree um, and that's easier than getting these chunks inside of a neck of a, a bottle and then also getting them out again. What I would do if I was using a puree, you can either purchase a puree that's already been pasteurized. Sometimes those come from uh, different places and, and you'll have to look and see if it's been pasteurized. Pasteurized essentially means that it's been warmed up to 170, 150, 170 degrees and it's killed off any bacteria. What I would suggest doing if you're going to puree, whether they're fresh or if you're buying one, see if it's pasteurized. 
pasteurized kit, I mean, both processes, the heating or the freezing will kill that bacteria. Um, and you still wanna use sanitized stuff, uh, your paint center bags and everything else, even though if that's been pasteurized or not. But if you are gonna pasteurize yourself, you can puree it uh, or even just blend it up into finer chunks anyway in a blender. And then you can put it into a double boiler or a bowl that's essentially over a, some boiling water and get that to heat up to 150 degrees for about 15 minutes. That's the pasteurization process. Now, sometimes with fruits, it'll do the same thing as if you add it to your boil, it'll taste a little more like a wine flavor, which is really good in some sours. So you may want to try to do that. I, uh, most of my uh, secondary additions, I just opt to freeze or buy frozen fruits. And so that's what we're going to be using today. We'll go through that process. So I have my masher, I have my five gallon paint strainer bag. I'm gonna go ahead and just actually wrap this all the way around the lip of this bowl. And then what I'm gonna do is add the mango chunks right to here. So these are frozen from the store. Go ahead and buy them right off of the shelf, throw them in the freezer, and then a couple of hours before you wanna do this, pull them out um, and then let them sit on the counter. And I'm gonna pour this whole thing right in my bowl. And before I add the second one, I'm just gonna give it a quick mash up. So I'm gonna take my potato masher and I'm just gonna basically try to break open a lot of the chunks. Now mango's a little different because it's a softer fruit anyway. So I'm just kind of trying to get it so if I see any like larger chunks and stuff like that, I can kind of bend it down and break it up a little bit. But if you're using something like raspberries or cherries or blackberries, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're kind of hitting each one to make sure you're uh, you know, breaking that skin casing open. Freezing helps break that casing down a little bit. So that's a really good uh, process by freezing, but pureeing and doing that kind of thing obviously opens up that skin as well. So once I got the one in there, I'm gonna do the second one. Again, this is gonna be six gallons of mango, it's gonna be really awesome summer beer and it, and you know sours people ask me all the time you know i've never really gotten into sours that kind of thing but i kind of compare them to the beer version of a uh of a, a cider right i have a lot of friends that aren't huge craft beer people i know weird right but the uh they like the sour so i keep a sour generally on tap all the time and uh so if people aren't a big beer uh, craft beer person anyway they don't have to drink a nasty you know bud light they can have a, a delicious sour instead um, i also try to do more like citrusy type of stuff like this in the summertime because i mean even myself coming in after mowing the lawn or something like that and you want a good uh you know citrusy beer in the summer or you're going on the boat take a big growler full of this stuff in there it's fantastic so break these up as much as you can. I'm gonna go ahead and continue doing that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie this whole thing. I'm gonna put it inside of my fermenter here, and then we're gonna rack our beer on top of it. Stay tuned. All right, so we have our mangoes. They're down in that carboy. We're gonna transfer it from our uh, beer that we just brewed up here. I'm gonna take this off. I gotta fetch my tilt hydrometer that's in there with some sanitized tongs. Get that guy out of there. And then we're gonna grab our racking cane. All sanitized here. Put that right down inside there. And we're gonna start our process. We are gonna take a hydrometer reading because I kinda wanna see where I'm at um, post primary fermentation, but this will uh, ferment because it has sugar in it. So you're inevitably gonna transfer some yeast. There's a lot of sugar in the mangoes. I expect my gravity to drop pretty good over the next week. And so I wouldn't expect a, a crazy amount, but there, you know, it's not gonna be another, you know, 10 points, but it will be several points because of all the sugars in the mangoes. But uh, the, process of, of adding sugar and getting some residual yeast will start that fermentation action again. So you'll see some airlock. You wanna make sure that you have enough room in there. Um, I also try to keep this off of the paint strainer bag and submerged in the liquid so you don't have as much oxidation because you don't wanna go in through the paint strainer bag as you're transferring this. So make sure you're keeping an eye on that. Um, I also take some sanit something sanitized or even the racking cane when I'm all done and try to dunk that bag under as much as I can. It will float up on the top, 
but you'll be surprised it transfers a lot of that sugar even though uh, and the juices and stuff even though it's sitting on the top of the beer um, you don't necessarily need to open it up and rotate it or do anything like that that's just going to introduce uh, oxygen or other bacteria to your beer that you don't need All right guys, so we're done with the transfer. I'm gonna do a quick hydrometer reading. See where we're at with this mango. I think I accidentally got a little bit more yeast than I wanted to because the dip tube dropped down in there, but it happens and it's gonna ferment anyway. So that's not a big deal. Right now it looks like we're at about 10, 12 or so, which is about where we wanted to end during our primary. Yeah, right about 10, 12. And so I'm happy with that. I'll give it a little taste. See how it, she tastes again. This is the same base sour that I do for a lot of my sours. Sometimes I'll add hops, sometimes I won't, but most of the time it looks just like this before it ends up looking like this once I add fruit, right? Um, this one's a little clearer than normal. This one has a lot of white weed in it. I like sours to have a lot of white weed to give that kind of cloudier appearance. It helps bring out the color of the fruit too. And this is a salad beer anyway. So you could do a sour with just some added hops. And if you like a, a good refreshing uh, sour, that's a great light beer sour. Um, with that, hope you learned something. Um, feel free to ask questions. Adding things to a secondary was a learning curve for me when I first got started. Uh, I do it all the time now. And so it was just a process of trial and error and finding out how other people did it. So we have our whole five, uh, six and a half gallon fermenter. It's gonna look like a lot more volume because we've got six pounds of fruit in there, but you'll end up pulling that out. So you'll uh, drop that volume down a little bit. I'm gonna keep that in my fermentation chamber. Again, just at a room temperature of uh, anywhere between 68 and 70 degrees or so, just so it doesn't have any fluctuation, but it is gonna ferment a little bit. So that points, I expect this thing to end at somewhere at like 10.08, 10.09, maybe 10.12, uh, or it started at 10.12, so maybe about four points um, when it sits there in about a week. And so after that, we'll take the mangoes completely out. I usually pull those out before I rack it. In uh, case or you've added it right to your fermenter, you'll add you know, the, the uh, paint strainer bag so that uh, doesn't let any seeds and stuff into your bottling bucket or into your keg. And then you go ahead and carb those up like you normally would or bottle those like you normally would. And so if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. As always, I'll have all the equipment and things that I've used, um, as well as a link to the brew day where I did the mango sour in the video description. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And with that, happy brewing and cheers.